Welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Okay, joking aside, today's the 31st of October, which um, in a lot of places is known as Halloween. And it's, uh, and it's it depends on who you ask, it's, it's uh, um, basically, uh, all, all Hallows Eve or Halloween is basically uh, the time of the year where um, traditionally you remember the, uh, you know, your loved ones that you've lost, etc. And it starts um, like a three day sort of ceremony, if you like, where you, uh, where you remember the people that you've lost um, that have died. And uh, there are sort of, in, in Great Britain anyway, sort of going back, um, there's, a, you know, sort of into pagan times, before Christianity was brought to um, the UK. Um, it was basically the same time of the year as um, as a sound, and that's basically a, um, again, it's, it, it's, it's seen as the start of the year where everything has basically died and basically re you know, was you know, was reborn for the next year. So this is really like New Year, if you like, if, um, you know, if you go back far enough. Now, obviously, um, over the years, it's you know, you know, particularly with the American influence in the UK, it's become a, a more sort of commercialised time just to have a party and a bit of fun, really, where you get you know dressed up and all that stuff. But that's one of the that's one of the few videos at the beginning, anyway. But for gardeners, it's most certainly the time where you uh, where you carve your pumpkins. Now the pumpkins are pretty much um, ready to go, and uh, I've not done this before, so you have to bear with me. What I'm going to actually try to do is I've I've, I've been looking for inspiration on the internet. And uh, there's been quite a few, um, there are some people out there who, who carve fantastic parving, um, um, pumpkins. And uh, basically what they do is they, uh, they use various tools, knives and stuff like that. Now traditionally, basically what you do is you just use a knife and a, um, a spoon and that and, and sort of empty all the, um, the, the inside out and you basically carve a face into it with a knife. But what I'm going to try to do today, I don't know how successful this is going to be, what I'm going to try to do is do it with a routing tool. All I'm going to do is basically use a power drill and a, and a router. Um, bit in it, and I'm going to try and route something out of there. Um, as I say, I've I've been carving pumpkins most of my life, but I've never done it with a power tool before. So I'm going to give it a go, see what it comes out like. Uh, I might make a complete hash of it, but there you go. But anyway, there's there's plenty more going on in the allotment, so I'll uh, I'll crack on and I'll show you what's been going on in the garden. Okay, so it's reached that time of year where we need to start um, cutting back some of the perennials. Now, as you can see, I've got this um, plant here which is kind of overtaking everything. So I'm going to give that a good haircut today. Um, the buddleus kind of start here. This yellow one's still in flower, so I'm tempted to leave that for a little bit. Um, I've also got another yellow one here. Um, I'm also tempted to leave that for a little while. Um, but uh, these buddleys here, these are the purple and white ones. Um, there's another yellow one there, as you can see, still in flower. But this large one here, uh, which is the one that's sort of featured all the butterflies and that this year. Um, as you can see, um, all the flowers are finished now, so what I'm going to be doing is giving this um, a really good haircut. Now, what I'm going to do is um, cut it down to around, this large one, I'm going to cut it down to around um, about three foot off the ground, so as you can see, there's some quite large branches in there. I'm going to basically cut that off at the branches and take all of this off at the top. Um, it's, it's a good idea to give... Um, Budlias, um, you know, a good cutback because it encourages new growth next year. Um, this one's been kind of cut back at around kind of the five foot level over the past few years, but now I've got these others established, uh, which are the ones that went in last year. What I'm going to do is um, cut all of them down. These these newer ones will be cut down to about two foot off the ground, um, and this 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 um, old one that's been here about uh, it's been here about uh, five or six years now. Um, I'm going to cut that down to around three or four foot. Uh, dependent on the branch but uh, the point I wanted to make is when you cut the branch don't cut it level because water will sit on that you want to cut it at an angle so if any water goes on it it'll it'll roll off rather than uh, actually stay on the branch so what I'm going to do is cut off these um, 
this front branch is first so I can get at the uh, the main structure of the plant and then uh, cut it right back. Don't be uh, don't be too frightened of taking too much off. Um, they will recover from it and uh, you, you'll see next year you'll have a lot more vigorous growth and a considerably better shaped um, bush. So uh, I shall be uh, getting on with that. Um, but the one thing that I did want to show you is um, down here we've got, um, there's a little damson tree there. Um, here's a um, cotoniaster. And we've got uh, the cotoniaster needs trimming back as well. That's uh, getting a little bit uh, too large. But uh, this is a cherry tree, and as you can see, it's um, it's been here for about um, 15 years now, so that's really well established. Uh, but at the back here, I've got a, a rogue plant. Now this is a tree that's uh, been here for about two or three years. And you can see how large it's got. I'm not quite sure of the uh, variety, but um, that most certainly needs to come out. Now, unfortunately, it's right up against the fence. So what I'm going to be doing is cutting that off at around um, five or six foot here taking all this away and then what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm leaving six foot on there purely because what I want to do is next year I want to replace this fencing and unfortunately that's right next to a post uh, which is unfortunate but what I want to do is, um, I don't want to disturb the ground too much now because I'm frightened that the uh, it might dislodge the post in the ground so what I'm going to be doing is uh, cutting it off at um, six foot five, six foot, then I'm going to dig a trench around the bottom of it and try and cut the roots as best I can now to kill the tree and then all being well um, next spring what I'll be able to do is just pull on the, brand, the, the, the the stump that's left and pull it back and I should be able to snap the, uh, the tapping root going in if I pull that um, sort of in the early spring before the sap starts to rise the, um, the tapping root should be reasonably brittle and that should break off allowing me to get at the post behind so uh, as you can see there's a reasonable amount of wood to shift today so uh, I'll better get on with it. Okay, so uh, now the trees have come down, I can show you what I've done. So I've left, um, this one's going to come out basically, as I've explained, this fence is going to be um, changed next year, as you can see. It's, uh, I think this, well I've lived here for 20 years and uh, it was in then, so this, this, this uh, fence is most certainly ready to be changed. But the, um, this tree that was here, um, obviously this is going to have to come out because it's basically near a post. So um, the point I just wanted to make was basically this um, post has been left at kind of the six foot level. Reason being is what I can do is I can cut round the roots now and I can use this to lever the, uh, to lever the roots out of the ground. There was a, um, this is a Catonia stuff, um, which, which basically had grown reasonably big. I've chopped that down as well. Unfortunately that's going to have to come out as well because that's also next to the post. Um, I've um, affected all the leaves across even though a load more have dropped last night but uh, I'll be uh, mulching these leaves um, so I've just sort of gathered them up in a, in a pile at the moment so that's that bit um, I've also cut back um, that's a damson tree there uh, which is basically um, self set but unfortunately again that's next to another post so that's going to have to come out um, now this ivy here um, I've not cut too much off because basically I think that's holding the fence up to be honest with you. But as you can see there's the root at the bottom there and what I'll do is I'll, when I take the fence out I'll just chop through that with an axe and I'll be able to take this out all in one go. Um, this holly tree here, all being well I'll be able to keep that because um, that gives me um, holly for Christmas and stuff like that so that's going to um, that's going to stay there. This is a, um, even though it's got ivy all over it, this is actually a um, yellow buddleia. Um, and I've cut that right back, that will recover from there. Um, now the other buddleias, these were planted um, in, in the last year, as you can see, I've cut that down to, um, well, sort of dependent on the size, that's around two foot. And what I've done is I've cut down, I've cut it an angle, as you can see, um, so if any water, if any water drops on there, it'll um, just, just go straight off. And I've cut just above, about an inch or so above the, uh, the shoot, so obviously next year these will, these will sort of shoot and uh, create the bush again. And then this large one at the end here, um, again I've cut it right back. Obviously you can see the, the small shoots and all I've I've cut. I've cut again just above um, a shoot, obviously that'll, that'll grow next year, um, as you can see here and here. Um, and I've cut it at an angle again. Um, to uh, basically to encourage these uh, these little shoots here to grow. So that's uh, it's made a reasonable difference to the uh, 
um, this this side of the garden. But uh, with, with with buddleias, it's always worthwhile cutting them hard back um, to uh, to ensure. Now this one here, um, as you can see, that's uh, that have grown into a funny shape. But what I've done again is cut it back to where the where the shoots are coming out for next year, um, about an inch or so above. Um, so that'll um, that'll grow on for next year. Okay, so I hope you can see this because I'm uh, I'm just recording in the uh, the greenhouse. So I've, I've put you in a different position as normal, and uh, I think I've got the uh, I think I get the price of the smallest uh, um, pumpkin of the year. So <laughs> it's only about uh, about the size of a 50p, but never mind. Um, so this is this is basically a uh, pumpkin that we've grown on the plot this year. And what I'm going to do is basically carve a face in the front of it here. So the first thing to do is to basically empty and scoop all the insides out now. Um, the best way I've found, uh, the skin can be a little bit tough, so you need to get yourself a nice sort of sharp knife. I'm sort of going in at an angle, and I don't know if you can see that, but the, I'm, I'm sort of going at a sort of, well, sort of perpendicular to the to the surface really. So when you put the when you put the top back on, it'll it'll actually sit there and not fall through onto the inside. So I'm just going to just quickly cut round. As I say, it can be a little bit tough when you first do this. And I'm on a glass surface here, so I'm, I'm needing to be careful. But what, what you might need to do is just go in every so often, like that, and uh, cut round like that. So you, you're sort of cutting through that, as you can hear, it's a little bit tough. Um, and again, just go like a couple of inches or so and then pull the knife back out. Because um, what you want to do is cut out like a circle at the top, like that. Now what you can find is if your pumpkins have ripened quite a lot, uh, what you can find is they actually start to split uh, when you're cutting the when you're cutting the top of the top. But not to worry, uh, this one looks like it's um, going to be okay. But in, in years gone by, I have had that problem where they've actually got quite brittle. Um, as you can see, just insert the knife carefully. Notice that my hands are kept out of the way. Always think of safety first. Uh, so if the knife does slip, it's going to go under my arm and not into my arm. So uh, that's the best way to do it. So I'm, I'm almost all the way around now. So just keep on going. And one more cut. There you go. So that's the top. And as you can see inside, um, you can see all the seeds and stuff like that. Now, if you want to keep the seeds from your pumpkins, all you need to do is just pull off the the uh, the sinewy. Sort of stuff so you're left with the with the seeds like that um, and what you can do is just basically obviously you're not going to need too many but what you can do is pull the seeds off like that um, and just put them in the greenhouse to dry now the one problem that you do have um, or at least I've had in the past is because I grow quite a lot of different squashes obviously pumpkins being one of them what these can do is they can cross pollinate with other um, gourds and that and uh, you can get sort of strange hybrids but what I'll do is I'll save a few seeds like that and then I'll um, see what they grow like next year. Okay so if you're not going to save the um, save the seeds or anything like that don't waste this um, this is this is good for if you've got chickens or if you've got um, wormery or anything like that this is this is ideal what I'm actually going to do is put this in my wormery so all you need to do is just insert the, the knife under there again I'm holding it like that so the you know, so there's there's no chance of me cutting myself. And I'm just cutting round un, under, underneath the uh, the flesh like that. And then if you just sort of scrape it as best you can. Um, I've just got a bowl here, and I'll just keep it across like that. So all you got to do is basically go around with a knife like that, and then all of that um, can be uh, discarded. You don't need that. Obviously, you need the top to go back on, uh, but uh, all of that can be. Uh, just sort of put to one side now, like that. So as you can see, we've got the the pulp. If you're not going to save this, don't don't waste it. You can put that on your compost or give it your wormery or your chickens or anything like that. They'll uh, they'll almost certainly thank you for it. So moving on to the actual main part of the um, pumpkin. Now I like to use a um, an ice cream scoop. So I find this is quite easy to uh, to do it with. But so basically, what what you do basically is get the get the um, the ice cream scoop in like that and just go round the inside 
of the of the pumpkin. And what you're trying to do is fetch some of the some of the actual flesh off as well. Now there's loads more seeds in here, so obviously, you know, for one pumpkin you can potentially get a few hundred seeds. Um, dependent on the side. These ones this year have been reasonably small. Um, if you just scrape around like that, um, just keep going round. You can soon fetch the uh, the fresh out. So there's pretty much your hollow pumpkin, and so you can now start to carve the face on it. Now what you can do after you've done that is go around just one more time, and what you're just doing is basically thinning out the uh, thinning out the pumpkin. Now you don't want to take too much out because the uh, it'll become obviously the more you take out, the less structure there is there to hold it together. And if you're going to start carving a face in one side of it, um, you know it'll uh, become weaker and weaker. So. Now I can remember, it's showing me age now, back in the uh, back in the 70s, pumpkins weren't that popular. I mean now they're sort of commonplace, you know, you can get them everywhere. Um, but uh, we, we used to hollow out a swede, uh, which was bloody hard work, I can show you. But uh, I can remember back in, the, uh, back in the 70s when I lived in uh, Wolverhampton, uh, we used to uh, hollow out swedes, which was uh, hard work. But anyway, so there's the pumpkin. Nice and hollow, as you can see. So there's nothing inside there. So what I what I typically do now is find the best face. Um, I'd say probably that one's the best one. Um, and what I do, so I've got a guide of what I'm actually going to do, is actually draw the face on. So what I'm going to do is just put the knife under there just to prop it up. And what you can do, if you if the pumpkin sits nicely. Uh, you can leave it like that. If the pumpkin's sort of a little bit wobbly, what you can do is cut um, is cut a face off the bottom of it, so it actually sits right. Obviously, this one's sitting all right, so we don't have to worry too much. But that's the that's the side of it that I'm going to um, actually draw the face. So I'm going to draw like a sort of a scully type face. So I see this is a marker pen. Um, I'm going to draw one eye sort of like that. Another eye, hopefully the same size and shape. There you go, so there are the two eyes. And we need a like a triangle type nose. Like that. And then underneath, um, in fact what I'll do is I'll make the nose slightly smaller. Like that. And you can see that. There are the eyes and the nose. Um, then underneath, what I'm going to do is, is actually, um, I mean, we've got the kind of the mouth like, sort of like that. Um, I'm just going to cut some sort of teeth in with the routing tool. Now, what I'm going to do now is stop the video and go get some power up here so I can um, start to route this out. And what I normally do, to be honest with you, if you haven't got a obviously a drill or a routing tool, what you can do. It's just really carefully with the knife, obviously hands out the way when you're doing this, is just go around, just in exactly the same way as I put the top out, just go around and cut through the um, through the pumpkin, so the eyes. And what you want to do is you want to make the hole go wider um, as, you, as you go into it, because what you're going to do is put a candle inside so the face lights up. But um, what you can do is just go around, cut through the, cut through the skin, like the, the first sort of quarter of an inch of it first and then go back in. Uh, you can always take more out. If you cut too much out obviously then um, you know you need to sort of change your design or get another pumpkin or whatever. What I'm going to do now is just get the routing tool and see what it looks like when I do it with that. Okay so there's the routing tool. All I'm using is just a power drill and in the end I don't know if you can see that but that's the uh, that's the uh, the routing bit and it's basically a reasonably sharp blade um, obviously these are designed to cut wood, but they'll, they'll go through uh, the pumpkin no problem at all. So there's the face. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to use this now to try and carve round the uh, the eyes. This could go completely pear shaped if it does, then so be it, but uh, I'll give it a go anyway. So I'm just going to carve the face in there.
Okay, so it's bouncing around a little bit at the beginning, but uh, I think that's pretty much good. So what I'm going to do now is just push that, push that in. You can see that's the first, uh, that's the first eye taken out. So what I'll do now is uh, I can I can clean that up later. But as you can see, actually using the uh, the routing bit uh, does actually give you a nice clean sort of cut on the eye. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'll, uh, I'll 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 try and do the other eye. Um, and by the look of it, what you need to do is basically stick the stick the um, stick the routing bit in first. Like that, so you've actually got it inside the flesh, and then you can work your way around. So that's the that's the two eyes cut out. So what I'll do is I'll just cut out the rest of it, and then I'll um, show you what it looks like. Okay, so there we have it. Um, I must admit, um, it's a little bit um, doing it with a routing tool and a drill like that. It's a little bit skittish. Um, you know, it can jump about a bit. Um, but uh, I've got a reasonable um, face cut out, as you can see. Um, I just went round the mouth and then up and down for the teeth. I cut the nose out, obviously you saw me um, do the two eyes, um, and what I did afterwards was just got the uh, the knife and I just basically just went round and uh, cut um, the um, just the little bits, the sinews that were still holding on the inside out and um, so there's my uh, pumpkin, so all it needs now is a, um, a little candle on the inside to, to light it up, put the lid back on and uh, hopefully that should uh, scare away all the evil spirits this evening. <laughs>
Just a quick comment on seeds. Um, I've I've uh, been given a basically ten pound voucher um, for a, a nearby garden centre uh, because I entered the Falonga show um, in, the, in, in the allotment. So I just want to show you um, the seeds that I've got. Now this is from a, um, a company called Country Value. Um, I've not seen much of them before. I'm not sure how, how long they've been about, but these were on special offer and they were a pound um, each. So what I've done is I've, I thought I'll I'll try some of the seeds. Uh, the first one is um, sweet corn, um, incredible F1. I've got a couple of packets of those, so I'm going to be trying those next year. Um, the thing with sweet corn is only ever grow one variety, as, I, as I've explained before. If you get multiple varieties close to each other, um, the, the sort of cross pollination can cause problems. So I'm going to try those that, um, next year. I've also got some parsnip. I normally grow three varieties of parsnip, but this is going to be one of them. This is called um, um, Hollow Crown. Oh, I'm going to give that a go. Um, again, a pound, so that's 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 really good. Chard, um, silver two, white silver two. I'm going to grow that next year. Um, spinach beet, uh, perennial spinach. Obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll grow that every year. Um, next one, Swede, best of all. Um, I'm going to be growing those next year as well. As I say, I've not used country value seeds before, but I'm, I'm going to give it give it a try next year. Courgettes, um, golden era. Um, Beetroot, um, Boltardy, the variety is. So uh, I'm going to grow a few varieties of um, beetroot again next year. I'm going to grow these in the modules, so I thought I'd give these a go. But uh, for a pound, I thought it was worth a go. And it gives off a voucher anyway. Uh, pumpkins, I've got Big Max. Um, hopefully these are going to be big. The ones I've had this year have been quite small, but uh, that's um, another seed I'm going to try. And obviously the butternut squash, um, winter butternut, um, butterfly F1. The variety, so uh, and I've got all of those. That's basically ten pounds worth, it's nine pound ninety, and because um, I've got a ten pound voucher, I've got them for free, so I thought that was really good. So I'm going to be growing them next year. Um, so I'm going to put them in a, uh, I'm going to, um, a plastic bag because the, you know all the, all the seed packets are sealed. So I'm going to put them away in the shed, and um, I'll be growing those in the spring. As you can see, we've got plenty of wood for the uh, the bonfire tonight. Uh, for the Halloween party, and it's actually my eldest son's 17th birthday very shortly. So, we've uh, this is the sunrise where we put the lights, and uh, as you can see, we've got it all ready for the Halloween party or his birthday party, anyway. But I uh, just thought I'd show you it's made an absolutely massive difference putting the lights in. You can actually see what you're doing now, and we've got it all sorted out, so it's all good. So, I hope this episode of Jim's Lightwood Garden has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions below, and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Adopted Garden.